Alrighty, everyone out there, welcome back to DSP versus the Internet. This is part three for April 8th, 2023. I hope that you guys are enjoying the show. Good variety of stuff so far. And now we're heading fully into the open member suggestions and nominations. Um, thanks for watching. If you are enjoying the show, remember things like liking this video, leaving comments will help. In addition, if you would like to be part of the support of this channel and maybe participate in this event, become a member. Members are the people who submit these videos. Uh, ultra members get their videos watched for sure on the show, while standard members kind of do first come, first serve. And that's what we're actually about to start watching right now, all right? So thank you, and uh, here we go. What's next? What is this? A Tesla. Okay. This is the current model, 2023. This is the newest Tesla. So what are we doing in the Tesla? Why are we getting into it? Is it a tour of a Tesla, maybe? A giant screen. I'm assuming that's standard for all Teslas, that huge screen. It's a hell of a wheel. It doesn't look like a wheel. It looks more like a uh, like you're piloting a, a fucking ship or something. Oh my god, is that miles per hour? <clears throat> or is that kilometers? Do not... This part of the German Autobahn has no speed limit, high speed test performed by an experienced driver. So this is kilometers per hour. This is not miles per hour. <clears throat> so what he's trying to do, he's testing to see how fast this thing can go from like zero to a really, really fast speed. But th there's no speed limit on this part of the German Autobahn. Really? I've never even met, seen a road with no speed limit on it before in my life. No gears equals fast, so that the car has no gear. It doesn't ever shift gears. Is that true? I don't know nothing about the Tesla. I really have no nothing about it. The wheel's interesting, but I don't know. I, I think I'm so used to the traditional wheel. Like, I like putting my hand up here to turn. I don't know if I would like always just having my hands at those positions and not being able to move. You know what I'm saying? Like, not being able to grab and rotate like a real wheel. That might actually annoy me. So this thing is lickety split, right? So the question is though, when you're driving at these speeds, right, does this kill your battery for driving at these speeds? I don't know, again, I know almost nothing about electric cars. The Autobahn is based on your stickers on your car, so people are allowed to go faster than others. Darjax is almost like he's using a game controller. I mean, yeah, right? Sure. It does look like a game, a game wheel or something. Jesus. Dude, that's a crazy acceleration right there. That's cool. It also makes me very nervous when people driving these cars. Like, not realizing the power that they have. You know what I'm saying? Oh, it's almost done. This is the top speed on the Autobahn. No speed limit. It really makes me nervous about it. It does. Like, that this guy's been, like, not paying attention. Fucking just driving it in some. He doesn't realize he can go that fast, right? Well, that was interesting. I've never seen a you know, Tesla before like that. So they're fast as shit. At least that was probably a high-end model, right? <clears throat> oh, this is interesting. Someone had talked about this. In today's fast... Someone had talked about this a week or two ago. All right. So apparently there's a new bank that's opening. The, it's called FedNow. This is it. And apparently the way this bank is, is promoting themselves is that they will never have a hold on your funds. Like, the moment you receive money, you just get it. There's not, oh, the bank is closed for the weekend, wait till Monday. Or, oh, we're processing your check, wait three days for it to clear. Like, apparently it's supposed to be, like, instant, instant money. But the question is, how does that work? Because banks have those holds for a reason. So, I guess we're about to find out. Paced world, time is money. More people, businesses, and organizations are demanding instant payments. That's why the Federal Reserve is developing the FedNow service, a safe and efficient instant payments infrastructure mm -hmm. that will modernize the U.S. payment system. The FedNow service will give financial institutions the opportunity to innovate, enabling their customers to send and receive money in seconds, okay. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The thing that gets me about this, though, is that this is over two years old, so what happened? Like, wh what's taking so long, right? 365 days a year. Funds will settle between financial institutions in real time, which means there's no buildup of interbank obligations, right. and end users will have access to the funds in seconds. 
How will the FedNow service work? Imagine the owner of a coffee shop is running low on coffee beans mm. and needs to schedule a quick delivery. She places an order and the coffee bean company sends her a request for payment. She responds to the request for payment and pays for the coffee beans right then and there through an app from her credit union, which uses the FedNow service. Once she initiates the payment, her credit union screens the payment and sends an ISO 20022 compliant payment message, either directly or through a service provider to the FedNow service over the Federal Reserve's FedLine network. I wish I knew what that the was. The FedNow service instantly validates the payment message and passes it along to the coffee bean supplier's bank. In real time, the supplier's bank confirms to the FedNow service that it intends to accept the payment, and the FedNow service debits and credits the master accounts of both the shop owners and the coffee bean supplier's financial institutions or the master accounts of their correspondents. So the FedNow is basically going to be a middleman, and the middleman is going to do the payments instantly, and then the banks will catch up with it after the fact. But they'll already, everyone appropriate will already have received their money, and therefore... Fed, this is putting all the liability on FedNow, right? All of it. So the question is, is this going to lead to mass fraud? Are there going to be people who are going to find ways to to, to mess with FedNow? You know what I'm saying? Hmm. Let's keep going. The FedNow service also immediately sends a payment message with an advice of credit to the supplier's bank and notifies the shop owner's credit union that settlement is complete. Finally, the supplier's bank credits the supplier's account in near real time, making the funds available. The supplier's bank will have the option of sending a confirmation to the shop owner's credit union that the payment has been posted to the supplier's account, providing the coffee shop owner with certainty that the payment was received. The FedNow service will be designed to be flexible and support a broad range of potential use cases. Banks, credit unions, and other industry providers can use it as a springboard for innovation to support a range of applications such as account-to-account -account transfers and bill pay. Right, because this is that's absolutely true. I, I know about this from using things like PayPal where sometimes, it, like for example, if I wanted to take money <clears throat> from my bank account and put it into my PayPal account, for whatever reason, it takes a long time. It could take days to clear. While if, for some reason, if I want to take money from a PayPal account and put it into a bank account, you could do that almost instantaneously. If you're using a certain method, for example, if you're using a debit card, it's like instant. If you're trying to use just a bank transfer, it takes three or four days. So there's a big lag with money transfer. And I guess essentially what they're doing here is saying they're gonna be the middleman and take on the risk and liability for to make those money transfers instant but I guess the question, there's a couple questions. The question number one is, what's their angle? They're not doing it for free, right? So Fed now, it sounds to me like Fed now will be taking a percent of each transaction to pay for the service, right? And also, what's the liability to them, <clears throat> all right, with these transactions that someone doesn't initiate a transaction and then pull the plug later? You know what I'm saying? Like, they, what if someone did a big transaction, millions of dollars? And then all of a sudden someone says, nah, I closed the bank account. So now the money actually can't come out of the bank account, but FedNow already fronted it before the transaction cleared with the bank. So how would they do that? I'm curious how that would work, right? For example, now imagine it's after hours and the shop owner gets a reminder that her car insurance bill is due today. She may be able to avoid a late fee by initiating a bill payment in her credit union app and selecting to pay it now. Mm -hmm. Later, she repays a friend for a pizza they shared using an app provided by her credit union that clears and settles through the FedNow service. With this service, banks and credit unions can remain competitive by offering the type of payment options customers increasingly expect in today's fast-paced world. The FedNow service will support flexible adoption, allowing financial institutions the option to work with aggregators, processors, and correspondents to adopt the service. Banks and credit unions will also have the option to adopt the full set of FedNow capabilities or sign on as a receive-only participant. The initial launch of the FedNow service will focus on core clearing and settlement capabilities. Additional features will be released in phases to meet evolving industry demands and changes in technology. This is funny because they're like, so initially all we're going to be doing is sending money, receiving money, and clearing out disputes. But later on, we want to expand our product line to do all these other things. But again, this is all hinging on taking on all the liability and risk for those transactions. And <clears throat> I'll give you an example. Like right now, I just made a payment against one of my accounts like two days ago. Let me think about that. 
I made the payment on my birthday, actually, because I remembered, oh, it's coming up, it's due. As of today, it still didn't clear because I paid it several days ago. It's like still not cleared. I'm like, when's it going to clear? Why? Because it's the freaking weekend. So now probably it'll clear on Monday. It's like, dude, why does it take four or five days for a payment to clear? So if you have something, a service like this, this would be great. You immediate, you know, immediate, oh, not, not necessarily gratification, but like immediate payment processing means it just takes a lot of stress away, a lot of risk away, but then there's increased risk for them. Again, I've got to, under, they don't explain what their angle is. Are they taking a lot of money to do this? You know what I'm saying? Like, is the processing, is there a, is there a large processing fee for each transaction? And how are they insured against that liability of someone canceling the transaction in the middle? Right? Interesting, but I wonder how this really works. And the funny part again is that I, I'm just hearing about this now. Someone told me about this two weeks ago. And I think that's why someone suggested this as a video. But the question is, where is it? Because if this exists, why does no one know about it? I didn't know about it. Right? Why is no one using it? I don't, I don't use it. I'd love to use it. Why? You know, it's kind of weird. Hmm. All right. Well, let's continue. Whoa, this is like real high resolution. What is this? It's positioned in one of the world's driest and hottest deserts. But that hasn't stopped Las Vegas, Vegas going from a small railway outpost to a city Robert of... Robert Boone says but technically it's launching July. This actual summer, it's launching. Interesting. I wonder what financial institutions will use it. Two million people that now welcomes over 42 million tourists in a typical year. Vegas's ability to reinvent itself time and again has seen it transform from an escape for the builders of the Hoover Dam into America's playground. <laughs> and the only city in the world where you can see the Eiffel Tower, Statue of Liberty, Egyptian pyramids, and the canals of Venice all in a single day. Yeah, but it's not real. <laughs> but with some competitors now emerging in the Middle East and Asia, Las Vegas is in a fight to maintain its status as the entertainment it's, it's, capital of the world and is betting big time on its latest attraction. The world first spherical structure. So this, this is over a year ago this was made, this video. I wonder what the status is. Let's see what this the is. The world's largest and highest resolution LED screen will not only transform the Las Vegas skyline, what the hell? but quite literally reshape the entertainment Look at this. industry. It's a giant globe or a giant sphere they're building in Vegas. Is this real? Since the days of Dean Martin and the Rat Pack in the 1960s, Las Vegas has been renowned for live entertainment. And between showcase fights and residencies from Lady Gaga, Celine Dion, Britney Spears and Magic Mike, the city Magic is constantly Mike. raising the bar with what it has to offer. Its latest offering, developed by Madison Square Garden Entertainment and located just off the strip so behind the Venetian, like. is unlike anything anywhere else on Earth. Known as the MSG Sphere, the $1.8 billion spherical entertainment Notice venue will stand 112 there. meters tall, yet. contain 17,500 seats, and feature the largest and highest resolution LED screen in the world. Wow. That's 19,000 by 13,500 oh. pixels, oh, nice. in case you were wondering. The screen covers an area larger than three football fields wrapping up, over, and behind the stage to give the audience a fully immersive experience that's a hundred times clearer than today's best HDTVs. Jesus. Outside, the building's going to be covered with 54,000 square meters. Gaming Guru says this is done. They are just they just started uh, testing now, and U2 will be the first concert coming up, so the, the band U2. So they're going to play on that stage, but they're going to have an insane HD spherical presentation around you while they're playing. That's interesting. Meters <clears throat> of programmable lighting, giving those who can't get in a show of their own. But the MSG Sphere is more than just a high definition screen. Using an advanced acoustic system known as beamforming technology, multiple audio streams can be delivered directly to individual seats simultaneously, while an infrasound haptic system will use vibrations to enable guests to quite literally feel the sound around them. It's not just those experiences that are unique. The way the building is being built is also unlike anything seen before. Hmm. It's fascinating. I don't think we're going to watch any more of that clip because now I kind of get the gist of what it is. It's interesting. So kind of reminds me of, you know, going to Universal Studios um, or an IMAX theater, but only it's like extreme because you're in an arena with thousands and thousands of people. 
So that, that's cool how you can have an interactive experience where it's kind of like, okay, look, you're going through the forest or whatever, like a motion ride, but at the same time that you can have a concert with crazy interaction too. That's very interesting. <clears throat> I wonder. I wonder how cool that will be. Hmm. Look, I, I mean, that's fascinating to me. It's something that I would, if I was in Vegas, I'd probably want to check it out. I don't know what I would want to see there, you know. So anyway, all right, cool. Let's continue on. McDonald's. Oh my God, that's so disturbing. This is HD. It's, it's like 60 frames per second HD. Mac tonight. You guys know what Mac Tonight is? This was a real ad campaign by McDonald's. I want to say it was the late, late 1980s. I could be wrong. It could have been the, the early 1990s. But what's up, Jay? Good to see you. Um, but what it was is that guy, they called him the Moon Man. And his head was shaped like a moon. And what they were saying was, oh, like McDonald's is open late. So you could come by McDonald's and get like a late night meal. Come get a Big Mac. Come get a salad. Come get some fries. Come get a soda or whatever. Um... It was really weird because that guy in this you can't tell because you can see this is like upscaled. They probably upscaled it for YouTube or something. But <clears throat> what it is, what he was was a guy in like a rubber suit doing this, dancing around in these ads. It just looks so weird. It's like really like this is gonna make me want to go get McDonald's at night. This guy dressed like a moon. I don't know. It was a weird thing. And there was a few different ads for it, and I remember it. Yeah, that's right. The, the Happy Meals had toys of him. The Moon Man and everything. I remember all of that. It was very odd. A very odd time. The character's name is actually Mac Tonight. Oh, I didn't even know that. So his name is Mac Tonight. <laughs> weird. Disturbing and weird. Alright, well, thanks for that one. What the hell? Hair, hair, hair? Why are they... They're fusing into chairs. Did you see that? What the fuck? Okay. Who wants to join me on stage? They're all fused to their chairs. What the fuck is this? Okay, how about the girl with the pretty hair? <laughs> hair, hair, Holy hair. macaroni, that's me. <laughs> oh, look at that animation. Gotta love it. Okay, are you ready to sing my song? Yes, I'm ready. Yes, give me the mic. Whoa! This is definitely nightmare fuel stuff, man. What in the hell? <laughs> okay, let's hear it, girl. The forbidden word. What? Hold on a second. You uttered the forbidden word. What? What did she say? I didn't even hear what she said. You are not welcome here anymore. Sorry, girl. Uh. If someone wants to take her away from here, go ahead. I volunteer. Pose. What are we watching? What is this? He absorbed her. And then he melted. Okay. Uh. Overpower Boone says, I think this is about a white girl who sang with Kendrick Lamar. But in his song, it had the N-word, and she actually sang the N-word on stage and then got banned. Well, that one went a little over my head. Number one, I don't even know who Kendrick Lamar is. And by the way, that video, I'm not kidding, that video we just watched is getting copyright claimed. So it says your stream may be temporarily blocked. So we stopped watching it now. So hopefully it stopped, whatever that was. But, uh, yeah. We might get claimed for that thing, of all things. That weird-ass animation. So let's let it settle for a minute before I hit play again. Because we got to try to get it to settle up. 
just in case the stream gets shut down, which I hope it doesn't. I guess we'll find out what happens. If the stream does get shut down, you'll know why, and then I gotta start over again. Hopefully it didn't. So this is ferrets. This is an old one, a 14 to 15 year old video. Ferrets. Huh. Seems to be settling now. I'm not getting the message again. <laughs> okay. All right, Hamkiller, I'll see you tonight. Are right, we good? Kendrick Lamar is a rapper. Well, I kind of got that much out of it, but I never heard of him before. All right, let's continue. Let's see what this animation is. <laughs> Very sad ferret. Harold, what's wrong? You look kind of sad. I am sad. Oh, no. Oh, hold on. Heads up, we detected copper and audio and video in your stream. Your stream may be temporarily blocked for this one. I can't tell if it's this one or the last one. Let's wait. <laughs> How could it be? Th could it be this one? It couldn't have been this one. I don't know. I'm very confused right now. I know it barely started. It makes me feel like it wasn't this one. That that was a residual of the last one. <laughs> this stupid copyright YouTube shit sucks. Come on. I just want to watch the clip. They're about to sing, says Derek. How, you've seen this before, Derek? They're about to sing? I could try playing it, but it might shut down the stream. I don't know. Hopefully that was the Kendrick Lamar shit that is cl getting claimed and not this. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. I'm going to hit play and see what happens. Ready? If, it, if the stream shuts down, I'll just make a new one. Apologies. Alex from Phoenix says, I can't find your DSP ranks consoles vid because I think it's going live this afternoon or this evening. I don't think it's live yet. I'm pretty sure it's going live later. I don't think it went live today yet. Hold on. I can tell you that right now, actually. While we wait, just in case the copyright issue fucking rears its ugly head here again. So, yeah, it's still scheduled. It's not live yet. It's today at 7 p.m. The video will go live today at 7 why did I schedule it for 7 p.m. Pacific time? I have no idea. But it'll be live here today at 7. All right, let's hit play. Now it's like the copyright shit ended. Let's go. I know. It's terrible. Carol! I am sad. So sad. Well, when I'm feeling sad, I sing about all the things in the world that make me happy. Do you now? An apple pie, a bright blue sky, a breezy meadow in July, an ice cream bar, this is a amazing. shooting star, the sound of a steel guitar. That is wonderful. I love the sound of rain, wearing a hat and cane, Tiffany window panes, lovely to see. Frost on a windowsill, the feel of a dollar bill, vacations in Brazil fill me with glee. These are all the little things that make me smile. It's great. This is all the stuff that makes life worthwhile. Everybody. Why do I feel like it's building up to a joke where they're going to say something ridiculous at the end of the song that's obviously inappropriate, right? Like he's going to say, like, slaughtering a, a, a village of innocents or something, right? Like, something's coming that's going to be ridiculous. I get the feeling. He knows the Holocaust was a lie. No, there you go. Oh, we're done. We're done. I didn't even have to go any further. That's it. We're done. I knew the li the line was coming. I absolutely knew it. <laughs> there you go. No, this is not ultra member submissions. This is a re this is a regular submission from a member. Okay then. Oh, let's sing about the things we like and don't be shy. Wait, what was that about the Holocaust? Yeah, see? <laughs> a, lice, a pretty face. Eugenics really makes the case. Oh, my God. Hunting sheeps and froggy leaps. Touching Harold inappropriately while he sleeps. What? Hey. I love the feel of grain, the screams of a man in pain, See? blood coming down like rain, showering me. That everlasting thrill during the final kill, body dumped in a landfill, got off scot free. These are all the little things that make me smile. This is all the stuff that makes life worthwhile. It was a different time 15 years ago, is all I have to say. One day I will eat your brain and it'll be great. So let's sing about the things we like and meet your fate. That was, uh, great. Thanks. You, you really cheered me up. You whore! Unto this world.
a child is born. Oh, shit. I hate when that happens. Hold on. I think this is a Mad TV skit. I think it said that when I was adding it to the playlist. So it's for that TV show, Mad TV comedy show. Sketch comedy show. And by the way, we're about to just put the part after this one. There he is! That's why you're hearing laughing. It's a sketch comedy show. Looks like Mac tonight. That facial uh, makeup. <laughs> the three wise men. Enjoying the night air, my brother. Your robes, give them to me. Oh, I come bearing many gifts, but I assure you, my robes are not among them. What are you? Some kind of wise guy? The. <laughs> well, actually, yes. <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger is the Terminator in the greatest action story oh my ever God. told. The cheesy skits, man. Search for the Son of God. Oh, guess what? Copyright, guys. So let's let's fast forward through this. Oh, God. We'll watch this one in the next part. Yeah, copyright. I knew that I had a feeling because it was from a real TV show that that one was going to get claimed. All right. Anyway, I got hit for the copyright. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. There's some weird stuff. <laughs> Definitely some weird stuff in this week's episode. Thanks for watching DSP versus the Internet. We still got the second half of the show to go, but I just want to say thank you. Let's put the part here. Remember, you too can be a part of this action. You can be nominating the videos for me to watch next week. If you become a channel member today, you'll be able to nominate along with everyone else first come, first serve, or if you become an Ultra member, you're guaranteed to have your video watched. Those are the first few videos we watched today. We're all from Ultra members, so thank you for that. And, uh... Oh, God. Thank you for that, and uh, we'll be back soon in the next part.